One of the greatest milers of his decade was Glenn Cunningham. In a meet at Princeton, he was trailing his perennial rival, Archie San Romani, until midway in the last lap. Here's a fine example of Cunningham's style as he turns on the heat with yards to go to pass San Romani and go on to win. The four-minute mile was far in the future, but in those days, Glenn Cunningham was the man to beat. Glenn Cunningham is the man credited with running the four-minute mile. He never actually did officially. He came close. His example inspired others to actually break the four-minute mile record. He was such a record breaker, sometimes he would come in second in a race and he'd break a record. Obviously, the first place winner in that race broke a record, but even his second place broke the record. So those running against him were inspired by his example. When he was seven years old, he and his nine-year-old brother in rural Kansas had the responsibility one very cold winter. Their task was to go to the school every day and light the potbelly stove in the middle of the schoolhouse and get the place warm up for when students arrived, because it's hard to learn when you're cold. So they filled the stove with wood and took the kerosene can and poured it on the wood and struck a match. Well, unknown to them, someone by mistake had put gasoline in that can. And it was an explosion, sent them both to the floor. Their sister was screaming at them to get out. They got out. They didn't know about dropping and rolling. They're just running like crazy. And somebody pushed him, Glenn, down. His brother didn't recover from the burns. Glenn survived and was sent home, told he wouldn't survive. He was not expected to live. The flesh was burned off of his legs in numerous places. These were the days before skin grafts. He was told he would never walk, and his parents massaged his legs every day and stretched them. His dad, he'd make his dad do it to him till his dad was too tired to do it. Then his mom would pick up the cause and stretch his legs and massage them daily till she got too tired to do it. Then he would do it himself, even though it was very painful. He was determined to walk. And one day out in the yard, he, he lunged off of the wheelchair that he was in and drug his body, his mother watched him, drug his body to the picket fence, pulled himself up and drug himself around the fence line, making his legs do something. And he did it so much for weeks that he wore a path around the inside of his family's yard fence. Determined to walk. And finally he was able to somehow walk and found out he, it was easier to run than it was to walk. So he, if it was 10 feet, he would run. <laughs> easier to run than to walk. Wound up discovering he was a good runner and became an inspirational all that knew him. Not only was he a champion runner, but he went on and became quite a student, earned his PhD, and survived a terrible divorce, the two kids to raise, and was blessed with a second wife with whom he had 10 kids. So he's the father of 12. They had a ranch for troubled youth, and over the course of his life, he and his wife helped thousands of youth always a turnover going on. I think the record of the inhabitants on their property was like 87 people. So this guy was a guy of determination and inspiration for us all. Someone who was determined to help others. Someone who remembered what it was like to hurt and inspired everybody that knew him. Glenn Cunningham, he was a believer. His favorite verse was in Isaiah 40. They that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. A lot of people do not know that the result of his in injuries, his right leg was two inches shorter than his left leg, and his left leg had no toes. So he's missing the toes on his left foot with a leg two inches shorter than the other, and he's winning races. And at least two of his fellow record breakers were from Kansas. Men whom he had influenced. Lord, I pray that you help us to be influenced by those who are committed to you and help us, Lord, to influence others to live a life of devotion to you.